Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Grand Hour video podcast series from Luxor Media. So today's topic is about tourism and hospitality. And please welcome Mr. Mario Mendes, the general manager of Sovitel Plaza Saigon. Hi. It's Hi, to meet you. Hey, yeah. Hey, thanks, Jason. Great to be here. All right. So uh, the first signature question for the, every interview of the Grand Hours is about watches. So are you a watch guy? Oh, I love watches. <laughs> Definitely. It's, 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 a watch is really an investment of a timepiece of your life. I mean, I actually wear two. <laughs> one is for health and one is still just classic look. You know, I still love classic watches. Perfect. So, so um, what, well, it's actually a yeah. Citizen Eco Drive. Mm -hmm. I've had this for about eight years. Uh, it's automatic. Um, it's quite a, I, I like that whole range of Eco Drive from Citizen mm -hmm. on the top end. So uh, it's, a watch is a very meaningful connection between a man and yeah. this watch, I have to say. But at the same time, I want to check my steps and health. So <laughs> that doesn't do that. So I do wear a smart uh, health watch on the other side. Awesome, awesome. This is the first time I see uh, a guy wearing two watches at the same time. <laughs> yeah. But that's good. That's, that's for a reason, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Echo Drive is uh, like, it, it's work even that you, you, you don't wear it. It's yes. still work. Yeah. Yes, it's automatic based. So obviously, it charges connected connectedly yeah. right because of your hand movements etc mm -hmm. uh like so for me it's also when it sits you sit it on a it has a rotating disc machine right, right. so it's always rotating so mm. that it doesn't lose con um time constraint yeah. yeah so awesome all right so we're gonna start with uh, something about your personal story okay okay so i heard that uh, like how long have you been working in hospitality uh, industry uh, over 24 years actually Jason uh, I'm a second generation uh, my dad was a hotelier in Europe Middle East mm -hmm. and uh, South Asia so ever since I was young I grew up visiting hotels on my holidays etc used to love running through the kitchens and the hotels and feeling the life and the buzz you know so naturally enough I fell into this job when I was about 17 years old back in Australia um, so that that I started as a dishwasher actually right mm -hmm. at the bottom and that's what my dad gave me advice because you have to do it is so pivotal starting at that area because you start to learn respect and grow through each stage and uh, career progression part in a hotel and when you understand all these areas it gives you a lot more valuable insights into running a hotel awesome awesome <laughs> i i think that you start from very low position as a dishwasher sure so you know all everything about the hotel management right definitely I, I think the key roles like my dad he started as a night receptionist mm -hmm. and he grew up the vice president so i mean in hotels to run hotels there's a fabric of so many components that makes it work mm. from the housekeeping to the front office to the back of house engineering to dishwashing all of these components are there to create a memorable experience or as we say in Sofitel yeah. a magnificent experience for our guests so all of these touch points have to work in sync together mm -hmm. and in luxury so awesome so you said that you're the second generation yeah uh, with 24 years it's, it's amazing you know like uh, amazing journey right 24 True. years so what is your big achievement that you consider your biggest achievement during 24 years 24 years uh, in the hotel industry yeah, or personal yeah. life yeah. <laughs> I guess I, I mean, you, I, you, you can both, share both, both right? <laughs> this is a very demanding job you yeah. know it, it is it is 12 to 16 hours minimum 12 hours a day to 16 hours daily mm -hmm. uh, you never really have days off like the rest of the public um, so I guess my two boys I've got two boys age 9 and 5 mm -hmm. I guess balancing that time to see them and see how they grow up yeah. is is quite a challenge but for me that's probably one of the best achievements and of course mm -hmm. reaching the pinnacle of becoming a general manager at this fine establishment here yeah. uh, it took me 22 years in January 2021 is when we be I became a GM of this hotel mm -hmm. um, it was the worst time as well in Vietnam as you know yeah. that year was <laughs> heartbreaking everyone said wow you became a GM but I guess <laughs> not at that time it was right. it's right after the COVID time right? Uh, it was right during the fourth wave lockdown, actually. Oh. I remember that year of 2021 yeah. where yeah. everything just shut down in Vietnam, mm -hmm. especially in Ho Chi Minh City. I know. So it was a very challenging time to enter this role. Um, but it also gave me a lot of resilience, a lot of strength, 
a lot of empathy and understanding how to now grow in this industry mm -hmm. in the recovery time. So I guess once you go through that as a GM, I think you could go through anything. <laughs> I believe so. I believe so. That's a tough time of everyone. And, and you learn a lot of experience from that too, right? For sure. Yeah. Uh, you learn a lot about yourself. I mean, your personal, uh, more in detail of your person. I mean, look, you're dealing with different um, criteria and assessment at that time. It could be anything from anxiety to depression to not knowing what was happening at that time, but still trying to manage a hotel that was still open. Uh, we became semi-quarantined, so we still had over 250 people living in the hotel, mm -hmm. uh, working for factories. So still managing, and we were kind of like locked down in this hotel. Mm -hmm. So managing all of that and still staying I could say sane, <laughs> not losing your <laughs> know, mind, <laughs> right. um, was a very tough time. Uh, but we managed to get through it. All right. That's good. So, um, I mean, like, a question about a lesson. So, was it a le one lesson that you always carry on with you on walking journey around, your, around the world? Be culturally adaptive to the cities that you work in. So, I mean, I've worked in Dubai, uh, I've worked in Bermuda, Thailand, Vietnam, all these amazing destinations. But the one thing you need to understand is how to culturally adapt, mm. be mindful and understand the mindset of each nationality or area that you work in. Right. By creating the buy-in factor, you'll achieve success. Um, and that, that has been a key thing for me moving forward. Um, I'm very much about a, a persistent person in achieving goals. I, I love this industry, but you need a lot of passion, perseverance, and most importantly, patience. So by putting these three together and understanding the cultures that you work with, their values, their, um, their way of critical thinking is of a paramount importance of bringing that together if you want to achieve your financial goals or all goals that uh, benefit all stakeholders. All right. So like before Vietnam, uh, which country did you work? Uh, uh, I was in Thailand, actually. Was in Thailand. For six years. All right. So you choose Vietnam or, you know, like your job allocation or your... Yeah, actually, funny enough. So I've been back and forth between Thailand. Um, the first time into Vietnam was into Da Nang mm -hmm. uh, back in 2014, 2015. I really loved it up there. I think that's one of my favorite cities in the whole of Vietnam. Uh, it's got a blend of beach slash city life. Mm. You've got so much to explore there being Hoi An, Lang Ko, Bana Hills, uh, Hue within the, and it's also when you live on the beach, you're only 20, 10 minutes across the road and you're in the city yes. vibe. So yeah. uh, was there for about two years at the Pullman Da Nang and then I moved mm. back to Thailand yeah. for a couple more years. Uh, and then there was an opportunity. We were actually looking at moving to the Philippines. Uh, it was a choice between Philippines, Manila, and Ho Chi Minh. Uh, I had heard a lot about Ho Chi Minh being in the economic capital of Vietnam and a very much a rising star at that mm -hmm. time. Uh, that year of 2018, I think it was one of the big years, 2018, 2019, for mm -hmm. Ho Chi Minh and all Vietnam. So I thought, why not? Let's, let's go for one more contract of about two years. And mm -hmm. the idea was to then move on. Five and a half years later, <laughs> still still very much uh, here. Right. right. Uh, but enjoying it, really enjoying it. Um, I think there, I, I love the vibrancy, the passion here, the excitement. Um, it's There's a lot going on in the city at the moment, especially with Michelin Guide coming in, mm. a lot of FDI coming in. Uh, the city is, is alive, we could say. It's still a bit behind our counterpart cities, but the pace that it's growing at is amazing. Yeah. Uh, if you walk around, you see a lot of new individual restaurants opening um, and a lot of bars, nightclub lounges. They're, they're beautifying the riverside. So it's a very much a walking city as well. The city skyline is rising. Mm -hmm. I mean, the past five years, I've seen the city skyline change dramatically. So there's a lot of excitement here to be a part of. And uh, it's great. And also being a gateway city into Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. You have connectivity into Singapore, KL, Bangkok, um, Japan, Korea. So right. it is a gateway city. Mm -hmm. um, hence hence, the, hence, why we're still here, I guess. I guess the excitement and the drive keeps us here. I think that's a good choice. That's yeah. a good choice of yourself. <laughs> All right. So we're going to talk about, you know, like 
Sovitel Saigon, the mm. tourism and the accommodation industry in the next question. Sure. So when you first took the position at the GM for Sovitel Plaza, so what were your vision for the hotel? To reignite it and redefine it. I mean, we've always been very much a corporate city hotel that was uh, on Le Duan. Uh, people say that we're a little bit at the other end of Le Duan, which is a bit quieter. But as you see, the city has built up dramatically. Um, over the past two years, when the COVID recovery was starting, we started to collaborate with many uh, local partnerships. I think one of some of the biggest or significant things that we've done in this hotel is built a whole new ecosystem of businesses, uh, right down from Ministry of Men, House of Babad, mm. a unique concept bar there that's actually kind of like a cross between a high-end speakeasy bar slash uh, concept mixology. We also partnered with Habanos, uh, with having over 150 types of cigars. Mm -hmm. yeah. We used to have an amazing concept called Research, which was wellness technology through urban, so infrared saunas, hyperbaric chambers. Mm. Uh, we are very much about creating these new businesses, collaborating with local partners because they bring a new demographic of business into the hotel. Uh, as we move forward, we are now partnering with the famous Jimmy Pham from Koto Hanoi. Mm. I'm, I'm sure you've all heard of uh, Koto Hanoi. Yeah. It's an amazing uh, social enterprise, what he does with taking the underprivileged youth, orphanage children, and putting through him through that uh, industry training and creating amazing Vietnamese cuisine. Uh, thereafter, we're opening another new wellness center, mm. a spa program called Bremier. Mm. So we're always trying to reignite this property to be more than just a corporate city hotel being on this diplomatic street. It's more about the lifestyle services that we offer to mm. you as a guest when you come in here. Ever since COVID ended, people are looking more for an experiential stay when they come to visit a hotel. They do know that they come for business, but they normally add on one or two days either side. Mm -hmm. What can I do in terms of what we call be leisure, which is a mix of business and leisure, right? Yeah. Um, how can I have more wellness or time being for myself that it's not just about a conference trip or a work trip? Um, that's where we play a big part in creating these wellness lifestyle experiences within the hotel so that they can uh, enjoy it while they work and play yeah that's um you know i uh, i'm lucky that under your management i have visited sovitel for many times so wow. i really love the, the wellness center of yourself they have a capsule machine yes for, for, for healing you know that that's very advanced the hyperbaric chamber yeah yeah, yeah. It's amazing. I, I love that and then you know like I think like you, your 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 vision like you cooperate more with the local partner, with the artists, and actually we 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 have do uh we have done a exhibition in Sofitel, yeah. Correct. Yeah. So in the lobby. In the lobby. So many things that have changed. You know, like it's helped you to change the the. Uh, I mean the appearance of the the. Perception of the hotel, you know, mm -hmm. before they True. consider Sofitel at the corporate uh, hotel, but now it changed more and more, you know, for lifestyle. For sure, actually, that's a great point where we we transform that whole lobby into a massive art gallery yeah. with sculptures, art, musicians. Mm -hmm. um, that was a great exhibition. Thanks to Luxo on that one on yeah. making that happen. Uh, All right, so Sofitel Saigon um, Plaza has celebrated its twenty five anniversary. So what is the highlight of that event? I guess the biggest highlight uh, was not just the amazing global CEO that came down from Paris and all the VVIP guests. The signature highlight of that event was commemorating our long-standing employees who have been here for 23, 24, and some even 25 years. Uh, we had about 15 of them get up on stage. Mm. This really set a moment amongst the crowd uh, that evening to see that they have spent a lifetime here at Sofitel Saigon Plaza. Uh, it was a party that brought together the true essence of what the, f the links, as we talk about our logo, uh, it is the links between the French and the Vietnamese culture. Uh, Sofitel embodies that strongly. So that night was all about joy de vie and art de vie when it came to cuisine, fine food, in inviting Michelin star chefs, mm -hmm. amazing musicians, and of course, the community who has supported us for 25 years, major wow. companies that have been a part of this growth, and of course, the people and ambassadors here. Mm -hmm. That was the significance of that night, and it was really portrayed that way. And we were, we're very proud of what we were able to achieve on that evening. 
it is amazing to to hear that that there are some people, some employee that work yeah. for you guys for 25 y e a r s It's a it's really I, I think it's were it's were a very meaningful night. With, with them too, right? For sure. I mean, I mean, we say that's a life sentence. Yeah, <laughs> no. that's a life sentence. But uh, for them, no, it's been their their whole dream. I mean, it, what we what's happened here is that this hotel has been a part of the community fabric where they've grown up here, mm -hmm. and now their children are some of them are coming to work for us. So it's a generational mm -hmm. growth platform. Yeah, uh, we are here. When this joint venture was created, it was all about creating opportunity for the youth in Vietnam to rise, for the Vietnamese to grow through the the mix of the French culture, our international branded hotel group Aco, and to give them the opportunity, the skill sets to go globally. Mm. Some have gone globally and returned back and opened their own companies. Cool. Uh, so this hotel has played a major part in the development. Uh, as as Vietnam rose, as Ho Chi Minh rose, mm -hmm. so did our hotel with the people. Cool, very nice. So I, you have mentioned about M Michelin few times, you know, like from the beginning of the interview. Yeah. So what do you think about you know M Michelin guys has come to Vietnam? I think it's fabulous. Uh, it is the most discerning, awarded, and most credible. Uh, when it comes to fine gastronomic cuisine, mm -hmm. Michelin star sets the bar high up there. Not only does it redefine the city as a destination, mm -hmm. it creates such a, a lower interest from high end travelers, mm -hmm. high spending travelers, to come into the city to visit us and see these amazing restaurants that are coming up. Uh, I mean, if you look at the success stories of Hong Kong, Singapore, Bangkok, 15, 10 years ago when Michelin came, it redefined the cities as key dining destinations. The same way we've only had it's our first year, so there's still so much more to come, and there are amazing restaurants here. I mean, some of them being my favorite, of course, good old Chef Peter at Anan mm -hmm. Saigon, yeah, fabulous Anand Saigon. to get the first star only in Ho Chi Minh. Mm -hmm. uh, Naha Dong Pho is actually one of my favorite <laughs> Vietnamese restaurants. I got a bib guide, mm -hmm. so it's really they are starting to see the significance of Vietnamese cuisine at a Michelin level, and that. Sets us as a world class dining destination, and it's great for tourism because this will create an influx of high end, uh, high spending tourists right. for years to come. Mm -hmm. All right. So in 2023, uh, the hotel have received many important award, including the top three best business uh, hotel in Ho Chi Minh City and Traveler Traveler Choice Award. So what do these award mean to you? Awards are a recognition of what. Our ambassadors and our team are trying to do, and that's a pursuit for service for excellence. Um, we're all about creating that emotional connection with our guests, the consistency in it, and creating that that familiarity that we say that we create our guests as one of our family. That like you're returning home. Uh, the awards come and go, but. That emotional connection that we can create with our guests mm -hmm. and our employees is far more important than the awards, um, because that's what creates your longevity as a business, especially in the service industry. Thank you. So Sofitel has considered as a face of Saigon for sure. You know, like you lay in the the, the like I think the 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 best street in the city, right? Sure. Pleasant Street. Um, so, given its location is a more beautiful street, as I just mentioned, with num uh, numerous historical building and destination. So, how do you manage to maintain to maintain and spread the dis the distances of French spirits in the hotel, such as the surrounding? So. We have many French elements in our hotel that we bring in. Uh, be it by um, regularly, we have something called the Saigon Gourmet Week every year, where we bring in again uh, Michelin star chefs from France or around the world. We also bring in unique mixology concepts. In terms of our goods that we use, we always try to find the the French luxury brands like Balmain, mm -hmm. uh, Diptyque, to come in. And in terms of our shampoos, our bed linen, as well as We we try to we what we want to do is create a French zest. Mm -hmm. Now we're reimagining the direction of Sofitel going forward, uh, and how we're going to have these luxury French touches throughout our hotel, be it with our croissants, our cuisine, mm -hmm. be it with the way we do cuisine service, which is personalized service. Um, it's these little touch points that create that 
French uh, Art de Vie or Joie de Vie, but mm-hmm. actually not anymore. It's called French Zest of Life. Yeah. Uh, that's how we want to reimagine our French connection and link here in Sofitel. Okay. So, besides the best service for travelers and businessmen, Sofitel has been willing to support the artistic and educational activity. So, can you share about the hotel policy for such that event? Sure, we do a lot of programs where, in terms of empowerment and development of our ambassadors, we partner with several uh, organizations. Uh, uh, I think one of the biggest ones is Her Turn Leadership with mm-hmm. the Koto Management. It's a micro-credential program for female leadership empowerment mm-hmm. uh, that after three to six months of going through this course, they get an Australian accredited management uh, micro-credential. Uh, we've had at least four who have graduated from that recently. And then it's great because they've gone on now overseas to Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia to join new industries. So it's given them the confidence and the chance to go internationally with their career. We also have uh, constant learning and development programs uh, trained by our corporate offices from Singapore and Bangkok for our team, be it mid-level management or senior level management. And now this partnership with Koto and um, Hanoi is about really creating a synergy for underprivileged children to have that opportunity to work in five-star hotel environments and give them a chance to think that, wow, they can have access to over 5,000 hotels around the world with ACO itself Mm -hmm. being a soft hotel, being a part of ACO. Yeah, that's amazing that you give give back to the the society while while, while you were here. here. Yeah. All right, so when talking about F&B, Sofitel Plaza Saigon had recently, you know, welcomed many guest chefs uh, around the world for in an exciting event. For example, Sofitel Saigon Plaza hosts the uh, Saigon Gourmet yeah, that you just mentioned and co-sponsor a fine dining conference this year. So what is your plan for the F&B at Sofitel? Sure, I mean, F&B is everything now in a hotel. It, it what it's you need F and B to make life in the hotel, mm-hmm. and it has to be cutting edge F and B. It has to be authentic F and B. It has to be all about the quality and the service, and more than that, what is the vibe that it brings, the story that it tells. How do we emotionally not just connect the food with our guests, but that whole experience? Uh, that's the road that we're taking now with all our F and B development going forward. Uh, not only Koto, it will be our French bistro restaurant partnering with signature name chefs going to our rooftop pool bar. Mm. We are focused coming into the new year is about creating experiential dining that centers around the whole 360 experience of the vibe, the quality, the taste, the sense. Uh, really heightening all five senses of us as humans where it creates an amazing experience so emotionally connected that that word of mouth will explode Mm -hmm. (laughs) around the community to keep bringing them back. Yeah, I remember that people talking about Sovitel Buffet. So you you still keep it running now? Uh, Actually, so that's, we we were well known for our Sunday brunch. We Mm -hmm. might bring that back in our bistro restaurant in a more refined manner. Mm -hmm. Uh, The future now is of course to be with Koto, ST25 by Koto. Mm. Thereafter, to create a new modern uh, cuisine restaurant with a French flair in our Le 17 Bistro by signing up with a signature Michelin chef. And then creating something more of a Latin slash Mexican flavor up at our rooftop pool. Our rooftop pool has probably one of the best city views Mm -hmm. of Saigon. Uh, Actually, when this hotel was built, all you could see before was the Caravelle and the Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. Uh, fast forward to 25 years now, of course, <laughs> that city kind right. has changed a lot. But we still have a great view of the city as it lights up during the evening. Yeah. Hence, uh, that is an area that we're going to focus on a lot as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, next question is, you mentioned about the uh, SD25 by Koto restaurant, right? So is it, um, what's it different will it bring and, the, and how does it add to the hotel portfolio of restaurants? Sure. Um, we're very much a corporate. Uh, so as I said, um, we're a corporate city hotel, but leisure mix. But most of the guests, are it's 90% foreign, mm-hmm. 10% Vietnamese. And whenever they're here, they're always leaving our hotel to go find an authentic Vietnamese experience yeah. and restaurant. Um, everyone knows that no good hotels don't do good Vietnamese food. <laughs> the best Vietnamese food is always found on the streets or by the local restaurants, right? Yeah. So 
that's the image that we're trying to change here mm-hmm. with this restaurant the story behind where these children uh, I would say children but where these young adults come from is so moving it's so captivating I mean most of them are from orphanages they don't have IDs they don't have citizenship they come from very rural backgrounds then Jimmy takes him through the Koto school trains them on commercial cookery and service and it's fascinating to know what kind of Vietnamese that they bring their their skills of what they grew up with as Vietnamese cuisine modifying it to create an exceptional menu when you taste the food I mean look there's hundreds of Vietnamese restaurants out there for sure how do we make a how do we make that difference yeah I'll let you be the judge of that when you come and try it next week okay. because it is phenomenal. I've done some tastings. I was quite surprised at the level, the intricacies of the sourcing of the products from north to south of Vietnam, from the provinces where they bring each individual project product to create this menu. Mm. Uh, that's where we're going to win with our guests and also with the local demographic that will be wanting to visit this restaurant. All right. I'm exciting. <laughs> I I. I I feel like I, I'm gonna be the judge for, for, for that, right? Definitely. <laughs> All right. Talking about the hotel operation, so what process is being implemented to Sovitel to, uh, I mean, to sustain the, the sustainability? Sure, that's a big, uh, a topic very close to my heart. I was just talking mm-hmm. about this yesterday with uh, Miss Earth. <laughs> yeah, Miss Earth. Uh, we are very proud to say that we are hundred percent compliant in our single-use plastic. Mm -hmm. So uh, everything from single-use plastic has been limited from our hotel Mm -hmm. for the past year, Uh, be it glass bottles, the shampoo bottles, Mm -hmm. uh, everything to disposable items. Everything now is, we have a checkpoint list, which is over 350 points Mm -hmm. that we go through on a monthly basis that we have implemented to ensure that we're compliant, that we do not use any single-use plastic. Our products and even the products that we buy, which are reusable plastic, have to be certified suppliers that have made these products through biodegradable products. Uh, we also work with um, HSI and V Food for being the only hotel that uses cage free eggs. Mm. Uh, we're 100% using cage free eggs, which is a great step forward. Um, so, sustainability is very important. Just now, we're moving into more of our MEP, so our, many, um, our engineering appliances, etc., AHUs, being a 25-year hot- hotel, naturally, it is quite old, but there is new technology on how to enhance chiller pipes, the efficiency of electricity to be much more um, sustainable. Being a big hotel that's over 280 rooms, of course, our energy consumption is quite high. Mm. Because as people like people talking about sustainability, but it's good to hear that you have a, a like three hundred uh, item checklist for you know yeah. like implement that for sure, and uh, that's and it's it's a non negotiable now. Mm-hmm. More and more Fortune five hundred companies who want to book your hotel will seek to see what implementations have you placed in your mm-hmm. hotel. Uh, more than that is the Gen Z and millennials who are coming to work. They ask us that questions in their interviews. What is your sustainable practices? Mm-hmm. So for them to, they want to be a part of a company that believes in that. Right. Hence, for us, it's a non-negotiable from both sides, be it from a revenue profitable side, be it from a human element of hiring. Yeah, fantastic. So people are changing the way to work and travel. So how do the hotel services chance to adapt the accordability? Uh, I guess that goes back to my (coughs) redefining, reigniting the lifestyle services that we try to offer in our hotel. Definitely, uh, people are much more concerned about wellness in their travel. Wellness is going to hit $4 trillion next year globally. Uh, This is very much a part of their whole Uh, purpose in traveling for work and also for leisure how do you create that whole holistic wellness experience Uh, that's not just about you know the spa or the gym Mm -hmm. it's about everything about what they eat uh, what are the products that they're using what are we using the traceability of our products uh, what is the areas in the hotel that create this whole wellness feeling and emotional connection Hence why we, as we diversify the services in our hotel to cater to all these aspects, we, we want to set ourselves up there that creates that unique wellness experience for guests to come and enjoy. What do you expect for the big pictures, for hospitality pictures for 24? 
optimistically cautious. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, 2024 is going to be, uh, I believe, it's going to be it's going to be a great year. Mm-hmm. We have to be optimistic. Um, naturally, we know what's happening geopolitically. Uh, we know that countries are facing inflation uh, domestically. Here, we notice what is going on in the real estate sector. However, it's it, it is about moving forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been through now two years of recovery. Uh, it is. I think it's definitely we're entering now into a very much a growth year, but it will be a a optimistically cautiously growth year. Uh, we'll definitely have some ups and downs, mm-hmm. but in general, I think the people are definitely want to move forward. We want to move forward more in investments. We want to move forward more in training and development, in creating new ventures, in creating new business. Vietnam is one of the hottest destinations in Southeast Asia as a tourism aspect. Uh, from north to south to explore that. Hence, we see 2024 year as a great year for tourism. Mm -hmm. Uh, And we're looking forward to the competition that's coming up in the city as well with new hotels, new restaurants, new bars. Yeah, we we have to keep charging, right? Yeah, sure. All right. So now we're talking about yourself. You know, like we we finished with the the hotel stuff, right? Now about your personal, personal story. So... What is the most interesting city for you in Vietnam? I, I, I think that you mentioned Da Nang, right? I, I love Da Nang. Yeah. I love Da Nang and I like Hue. Mm-hmm. Hue and Da Nang, I think, are probably my two favorites. Hue, fascinating about, is the citadel. Mm-hmm. Walking around there and seeing the history of the dynasty of what uh, Vietnam was so many years ago. Um, I think that's a very fascinating. There's so much culture and history here to, to explore. Uh, da Nang, I guess, as a lifestyle city, is right. just is just fabulous. But about a couple of years ago, I did do the famous three hundred kilometer bike ride down into the Mekong Delta. Mm-hmm. Uh, Akko, it was a it was a ride for charity uh, for the famous Paul de Brule School, where we were. It was about eighty riders from around the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, we set off from Ho Chi Minh and we and we rode bikes all through Bentre, Kanto, mm-hmm. into the rural villages, and and that was fascinating to go through the rice fields, the coconut fields, mm-hmm. uh, living, stopping by some rural houses, drinking cane cane sugar drink. <laughs> cane. <laughs> um, it was a fascinating experience to be out there, seeing the temples down there, mm-hmm. to get off the beaten road. As we say, right. and that's there's a lot of places like that here mm-hmm. to see and explore, like Hazian, up in the Hazian, narrow roads. So I'm yet to go up there. Mm-hmm. I think the best way to explore Vietnam is on by bike, so you can get really into the rural areas or the small alleyways or roads to get off that beaten track and see what what life really is mm-hmm. uh, and experience it firsthand. So you you know how to ride a motorcycle. Uh, bicycle, <laughs> bicycle. Bike. I would probably, uh, at least a bicycle. It's uh, one no carbon footprint, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, you can. But stop. no motorbike, right? Yeah, <laughs> oh, uh, the motorbikes. I'm still a bit scared around the That's roads right. here. <laughs> That's right. The whole uh, that that comes with a lot of strength. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, have you been in any festival in Vietnam so far? Um, yeah, the Coconut Festival in Bentre. Oh, all right. <laughs> that was interesting. Festival. So when we did the ride and when we were staying at Bentre, mm-hmm. I saw firsthand how important the Coconut Festival is. And then I realized that actually that city is the agricultural capital mm-hmm. of the whole Mekong area, That's be right. it Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam. Down in that area is where everything is exported, not only to the, wor- to the world, actually. Uh, it's really an agricultural couple, uh, capital when it comes to coconut and raw goods. Mm-hmm. And also the famous river coconut mm-hmm. that grows underneath. So That's right. Uh, that was uh, quite an interesting mm-hmm. <laughs> place. That's good. So what is your hobby, you know, beside war? Uh, playing PlayStation with my son. All right. Uh, we like playing PlayStation games. PS5. Uh, yeah, PS5, <laughs> playing NBA, K, and uh, Fortnite, mm-hmm. and uh, Grand Theft Auto. All right. <laughs> uh, I, I guess that's that's how we bond mm-hmm. now. Right. Uh, I do like that because, you know, in my industry, you're always in events and dinners and lunches. So uh, being at home on the couch and mm-hmm. just playing PlayStation is, is very relaxing. That's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so what is your... More treasures, art collection. Wow, I think I'm just getting into art. Actually, mm-hmm. I'll be quite honest with you. Uh, I think a bit late to the game. 
Uh, I do like the photography of Rehan. Uh, I do love the sketching of Richie. Mm-hmm. Um, these are guys, and of course, Jerome, with what he does with his uh, redefined art, uh, combining the neon light and t- on the old tin sheds. Uh, I mean, these three great artists that are here in Vietnam itself, uh, it's fascinating what they do, uh, blending their cultures and their style. Yeah. Uh, I guess art in general is something that you're looking into I mean it's a great thing to build on mm-hmm. but I, I'm going to say that I'm still learning about that very much more so yeah. learning about that um, no, if I've, you tell me about collecting mm-hmm. the latest golf set yeah probably Hanover uh, Taylor May Titleist yeah mm-hmm. that's that's my art for me the art of how uh, let's say a 56 wedge is built <laughs> but you know a Volky 56 wedge the precision that goes into that wedge and how that redefines your game yeah mm-hmm. that's an art for me actually do you mind just share your handicap to me <laughs> <laughs> not on public All right. I'm a I'm social kidding. golfer I, I love um, golf uh, I love golf because of the principles that it teaches you yeah it really is a gentleman's Agreed. game and you know it's so true how they say you play one round of golf with somebody you know everything about that person correctly and vietnam has some of the best golf courses in the world uh from north to south yeah. it's stunning and and they're built by some of the world's famous golfers mm-hmm. so uh for me it's greg a golf norman, in paradise greg norman greg norman yeah. luke donald robert trent jones uh yeah the fabulous courses cool all right, so what is your motivation quote that you always use to start your day? Keep calm. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> they know. <laughs> My team knows. <laughs> oh, is Mario calm today or not? <laughs> I guess so. Keep calm mm-hmm. uh, and uh, persevere. Persevere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Keep calm and persevere. Mm-hmm. Cool. Keep calm and persevere. Because if you can do those two, everything else will fall in line. Um, it can be quite frustrating maybe exhausting Mm -hmm. time consuming so how do you keep your mental well-being is to try at utmost of it's just to keep calm and persevere through anything that throw the day throws at you we're talking about food right so what's your more favorite food in vietnam uh when i was living up in da nang there was a dish in hoi an called khao lao Kao Lao. Kao Lao. Yeah. I think it's uh, the pork. A very, it's a little bit of a spicy dish with pork, udon noodle kind of feel to mm-hmm. it, I believe. Uh, it's a fabulous dish in the Hoi An Old Town. I found it. Um, I love that dish, actually. Kao Lao. I think that would be my favorite Vietnamese dish. You like pho, too? Yeah, of course. True to pho bo. Yeah. Uh, pho guy, yes. That's, <laughs> it's the best dish for either when you have a hangover right, right. or if you're sick. For the next morning. Right? Yeah. yeah, or even just an easy breakfast. But mm-hmm. I, I actually really prefer it whenever I get sick or I have a really bad hangover. Mm-hmm. Uh, a nice, spicy, authentic pho bo. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. That's Clears a you cure. up perfectly. That's a cure. The yeah. best cure for us. <laughs> All right. So what is your must-have item in your confident outfit? Uh, just a simple black t-shirt, jeans, and my classic Vans. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Uh, I'm, very, I'm very much, uh, as you can see, I mean, every day I'm wearing suits and tie and everything. Right. I love just wearing a classic black cotton t-shirt, jeans, and my Vans. Yeah, uh, That's the most comfortable for me. Uh, I love to, I, I think I got like, nearly 40 black t-shirts <laughs> 40 black t-shirts <laughs> and their vans reason. at least three sets of three to four sets of classic vans mm-hmm. but the same van black the same van with the white the right. black on the top white trimming on the side and the red the classic one from over 20 years um, gets harder and harder to find that because everyone's mm. going into patterns right. and new style now but that that's me you know just a simple classic look is, is fine for me. <laughs> so I, I, I believe that your your employee gonna shock when they see you in a in different outfit. Yeah, right? they, they they say, Wow, you're twenty years younger. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> All right, so uh what's a fashion brand that you absolutely love? Hmm, interesting. That's a good one. Is it a fashion French, brand? French brand? Uh, a fashion brand that I absolutely love. Wow. <laughs> I guess it's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. Fashion brand, absolutely. Um, look, look, I guess for the t-shirts that I wear, Lacoste. Lacoste. I, I love that classic. The, the cotton Lacoste mm-hmm. is, is fabulous. They probably make one of the best simple cotton 
uh, uh, t shirts. Very you versatile, right? Yeah. You can wear it, you know, for know. every event, I guess. Bingo. So, yeah, I would say Lacoste. Mm hmm. Who wouldn't say it's love, but it's, it's a good brand. It's a reliable brand. It's reliable a, brand. It's a brand that's always there for you what you need. You yeah. Know? So, yeah, look. So, uh, what is a rare type of cigar in your collection? <laughs> <laughs> I have a, we have a beautiful cigar shop down here with over 150 right? types yeah. of cigars. Unfortunately, I actually don't smoke cigars. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's a question you got me on. Sorry, mate. No, no, no. I, I actually do love shisha. I mean, I used shisha. to live in Dubai, so yeah. I really love shisha. Mm -hmm. Most of my friends who know me also know that I love shisha. Um, but cigar, I guess if I was to say a single out one, maybe a Partagas. Mm, um, Partagas, yeah. Number five, is it Partagas number five? I mm -hmm. think it was, that's probably one of the best, but. All right, so let's call it for the day. And yeah. thank you. Thanks thank a lot you for very much, sharing. Jason. <laughs> All right, and I would like to see you guys uh, for the next episode of uh, the video podcast called Grand Hour. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you, bye-bye.